Badger's Perfect Garden, written by Marcia Diane Arnold, illustrated by Ramona Kalitsky. One spring morning, Red Squirrel found Badger surrounded by dozens of jars. The jars were filled with seeds. The seeds looked hopeful, just like Badger. What are you doing with all those seeds, Badger? Getting ready to plant. I gathered them late last summer and kept them in jars all through the fall and the winter. Now I'm going to plant a perfect garden. Red Squirrel looked closer. They're all different. Yes, all kinds. Green and brown, flat and round, bumpy and smooth. Whirly, curly, and straight as my whiskers. Where did you find them? Some from Weasel's Garden. Some from the wildflowers near Dormouse's home. Some stuck themselves to my fur. And some floated in on the wind. You have so many, said Red Squirrel. You'll need help planting. Weasel brought his favorite rake. Red Squirrel helped Dormouse gather string. Badger studied his garden plan. We have to make sure the garden is perfectly smooth, said Badger. Everyone weeded and raked. When the earth was as smooth as the forest pond in winter, Badger pushed his big sticks into the dirt. Red Squirrel and Dormouse stretched string between the sticks to mark rows. Be sure the rows are perfectly straight, said Badger. Weasel found a twig to make holes for the seeds. Bumpy seeds in this row. Round ones here. Keep the whirlies together, Badger directed. When the seeds were planted, Badger invited his friends to a celebration. Everyone enjoyed muffins and mulberry juice. Badger imagined the plants that would grow in a perfect rose in his perfect garden. The next day, the sky sent showers. Badger smiled. The day after that, it sent heavy rains. Badger worried. The day after, the day after, it sent a downpour. Badger grabbed his umbrella and rushed outside. He ran up and down the rows, trying to cover his seeds. The rain kept pouring. Badger flung himself across the rows, doing his best to hold the earth together. Sticks and strings collapsed, and the ground began to slide. Ah! Red Squirrel, Dormouse, and Weasel came running. My beautiful seeds have washed away, Badger sniffed. Seeds will float on the wind again when the sunniest days come, comforted Red Squirrel. After the wildflowers bloom, there'll be seeds to collect, said the Dormouse. We can gather seeds when the vegetables ripen, said the Weasel. Collecting seeds is hard work. And besides, I have no perfect garden this summer, said Badger. Badger could not be consoled. He stayed in his house, busying himself with this and that. One summer day, in the middle of his afternoon nap, Badger heard a clamoring at his door. Badger, come look, come look, cried Red Squirrel, Dormouse, and Weasel. Your seeds found another place to grow. 
Those can't be my seeds, said Badger, rubbing his eyes. They're all mixed up. They've just rearranged themselves, said Red Squirrel. If you hadn't planted them over there, they wouldn't be here. Badger stared at the hodgepodge of colors, the jumble tumble of shapes and sizes, and they made him feel jumbly and tumbly too. It looks like a celebration. It's the most perfect garden of all. And because the friends loved celebrations, they ran into the garden for the hodgepodge of garden games, jumbly, tumbly dancing, and muffins and mulberry juice. The end. I enjoyed reading Badger's Perfect Garden to you. I hope you enjoyed it too.